This is Spoken Gospel. We're dedicated to seeing Jesus in all of Scripture. In each episode, we see what's happening in a biblical text and how it sheds light on Jesus and his gospel. Let's jump in. Psalm 29 is a song about God's power over all other gods and mighty beings. Every verse, except one, includes God's personal name, which we sometimes pronounce as Yahweh. And in most verses, it's used twice. This poetic effect leaves you with no doubt that this Yahweh is not only the center of the psalm, but the center of everything. This glorious God deserves to be worshipped. David then directs most of his words toward God, comparing God and his voice to a powerful storm. God's voice is like a hurricane that lays trees flat. His voice is so powerful that even the tallest mountain in Lebanon shakes when it hears his thunder and sees his lightning. In all, David uses the phrase, voice of the Lord, seven times. It's a subtle hint to the role God's voice played at creation. But most importantly, it communicates there is nothing in all the earth that does not tremble and bow before the sound of their creator's voice. That's why everyone who hears it shouts praise to God. It's also why David refers to him as the king even over floods. The reference to a flood should remind us of how God warned Noah about another terrifying flood. But more significantly, it reminds us that God's voice also protected and blessed Noah and his family, eventually giving them peace. That's why David ends his psalm with confidence in how God uses his power. God uses his voice to strengthen and bless his people with peace. David often talks about God as the one who is in control of the storms. In part, that's because Israel often wrongly worshipped the God called Baal, the Canaanite God of storms. Psalms like this one reminded Israel that Yahweh ruled the storms and Baal did not. The seemingly unstoppable forces of nature can be calmed with the simple voice of the Lord. It's significant then that Jesus calms a storm with his voice too. In every gospel account that records it, Jesus rebukes the storm as if it were some demonic god oppressing the people. Jesus does what the voice of the Lord did during Noah's flood. He brings peace and blessing where there was once chaos and fear. That's why the disciples are terrified when they ask among themselves on the boat, who is this that even the winds and waves obey him? There is only one being who can calm storms, the terrifyingly powerful God. Jesus is the storm calming God. But Jesus doesn't calm hurricanes and flatten waves just for the fun of it. His power over the storms point us to the truth that he's the God who calls our dead hearts back to life. More impressive than calming a storm or walking on water is the miracle of raising a sinner from the depths of the dead and seating him at his right hand. Just as Israel shouted glory to God for saving them from the storm, we too praise Jesus for the voice that saves us from a watery grave. Jesus is king of storms. So. Bow to him and rejoice. There is no tempest his voice will not calm, and there is no grave he cannot empty. So I pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see the God whose voice covers the water. And may you see Jesus as the one who calms our storms and blesses us with peace.